Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. We have a pretty interesting show for you today. We're talking about must have angling knowledge. Now the cool thing about fishing is you can make it as simple or as complex as you want. Some people enjoy the fast paced, high intensity environment that fishing tournaments too, too. provide. In the opposite end of the spectrum, people enjoy the more relaxed, casual side of fishing, just looking for a tasty meal of fresh caught fish. There's certain aspects of angling that cross both geographic and species boundaries that apply to both novice and seasoned anglers. On today's show, we're joined by Lake Vermilion guide Billy Rosner to share some key factors in how to become a more successful angler. Well, Billy, thank you for taking some time out. I know this is a busy time of year for you. What are some things you can share with us about being more successful on the water? That's a great question, Troy. First of all is you know, your seasonal movement, and a lot has to do with bait, the food. Uh, on Vermilion, you know, as we get into June here, we're gonna probably, you know, third week in June, our mayflies start or hatch, and you're gonna wanna be in those soft bottom transition areas, you know, like, where like sand meets mud, and, and that's gonna be really important. You're, you're gonna wanna know where those small perch are at, your crayfish, that type of things and then make your adjustments off of what species you're focusing on. That's really where I start. And then of course, mother nature with the weather patterns and stuff too. So you kind of got to oh, yeah. put it all together. And uh, oh, yeah. oh, there you go, Billy, all yours, man. You know, in some areas, you know, they might be biting in 22 feet of water in a transition area, or they might not be biting, but you got to move around on Vermilion. It's a complex system. Uh, you might move down three, four miles and they might be biting on a weed edge in eight to 14 feet of water. So just because they're not biting in one area, you can just move down, find the feed, and uh, you know, they're biting somewhere. You just gotta find them. Now let's switch gears from experimenting with location. Uh, what do you do for choosing and selecting different baits? Uh, bait selection, you know, if I'm fishing fast, of course, you know, jig and wraps, hair jigs, that, that all plays in. Hair jig, man. They're whacking it today. And uh, if I can't get them going on that stuff, and if I'm seeing fish, then I'll slow down and I'll, I'll drag, you know, live bait rigs, like a Lindy rig with a leech, or a, like on Vermilion, a half a crawler is, is really important. And uh, I like a long snell, you know, like a six, 60 inch uh, suffix fluorocarbon leader with a, like a number four VMC wide gap hook. And on Vermilion, I like that bead of some color, like a green or a yellow bead above that hook seems to be key. And, and that usually puts a lot of fish in the boat if I can't get them fishing really aggressively. And are there other things you can share with us about presentations? Yeah, you wanna sort of match the hatch. You know, if the mayflies are going, you know, you wanna maybe drag a leech on a Lindy rig or throw a nice hair jig, that kind of represents a, a leech. Uh, you know, it's, it's all about the food always. Just always, you know, keep that in mind. If you catch a smallmouth and spitting up crayfish, you know, fish something a crayfish pattern, crankbait or something like that. Same with the walleyes, you know, if they're spitting up bugs or if they're spitting up minnows, you know, you can kind of match the hatch that way. So that's really key. You know, those fish will tell you a lot after you catch one even. So always keep that in mind. Well, thank you, Billy. Hopefully I can make it up there this season. I really like fishing on Lake Vermilion. Well, stay with us after this short commercial break. Get it all, just get it all. We're gonna be talking about how to get net fish. If you can grab this tail, Jared. Oh, Fishing is all about connecting with nature. Then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. Simple, fast, and easy. 
This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. The Deep V Jig from Northland Tackle. Light them up with this proven performer. The Deep V sports a keel design that gets you down faster and straighter. It also features 3D eyes that along with its unique colors and sizes, gives you the edge for when the bite gets tough. And the barbed wire keeper keeps your bait tight for more casts and more bites. The Deep V Jig from Northland Tackle. We are Walleye. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our Timely Topics feature, and we're going to be talking about how to net fish. Yeah. It's a musky. It's a musky. Get it, Sherpa. Get it. Get it. All of it. Oh, yeah. No, no. Okay. He is so big for this net. Get it all. Just get it all. Get it all. Get it all. You can grab this tail, Jared. Oh, I got the okay. I got the weight of him. Okay, we got him. We got him. We got him. Wow, dude. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Holy crap. Woo! My goodness. That is a quality fish. There we go. That is a St. Louis River big muskie. Now netting fish is a critical aspect of angling. And the first thing you gotta do is make sure you have the right net for the job at hand. Today's nets come in a wide variety of different sizes designed for every different species of fish. We've got nets for crappies and panfish, nets for largemouth and smallmouth bass, nets for walleyes, and even larger nets for pike, muskie, and lake trout. Today the best nets have a good solid yoke and are made of strong tubular aluminum and have adjustable telescoping handle with the conservation focus rubber coated netting. This netting is less likely to remove the fish's protective slime coat. Clam Outdoors Fortis line of nets has all the right features and even has a lifetime guarantee. Yeah, nice feisty little guy. Got the net for me? I do. Appreciate I that. These guys are a lot easier to deal with them with a net. Trying to hand land these runts is a little bit of a different story. You need a long net. Come here. There, there you go. Is. See how I get that, Baba? Thank that you. long scoop. I know one thing, you gotta have a net in this neck of the woods. Because you never know what's gonna bite on your line. It could be a giant smallmouth bass, it could be a giant muskie. It could be a 10-pound walleye. You never know. Now netting fish is kind of an art form in itself, and it does take a little practice to be proficient at it, but it all starts with positioning of the net man. This is particularly more important when you're dealing with large, powerful fish like muskies, pike, or salmon, or if you're using light line fishing for walleyes or bass. As a general rule of thumb, you want the net man slightly in front of the angler reeling in the fish. It's really important you don't put the net in the water until the last minute, because the net tends to spook the fish away from the boat. If possible, always try to net the fish head first. I've seen many anglers try to net fish tail first, and this is where a lot of fish are lost boat side. The real key here is the angler fighting the fish literally leads the fish into the net. Remember, it's really hard to net a fish with the net fully extended. If you bring it in closer, you have a lot more control. Netting fish in fast river current is always tough. Make sure to position the net man downstream of the angler with the hooked fish. It makes it a lot easier for the angler to simply back up and bring the fish to the net. 
This is the exact same thinking that can be applied to netting in trolling situations. Muskie anglers use a very specific large net with a deep bag. Muskies once in the net are usually left in the water where you can take the hooks out and minimize the chances of hurting the fish. Once the hooks are out, take the fish out of the net for a few pictures prior to release. Oh, pike. Nice one. You know, I like catching them, but sometimes it's all right to be the net man. As you can see, there's a lot of different nuances when it comes to netting fish and the topic of netting fish just in general. Well, that could be an entire episode without question. We'll stay with us after this short commercial break. We got our buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Help your engine run better and last longer with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam is safe and easy to use in all types of cars and trucks. Just pour it in your fuel tank. When added to fuel, Seafoam works to clean and lubricate your entire fuel system. Helps engines start easier and run smoother. Reduces long-term engine wear and helps prevent costly engine problems. Make the proven choice. Seafoam Motor Treatment. Available at Fleet Farm. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. To kick it off, we're gonna join Jeff Evans in Hayward, Wisconsin. On Suwamigan Bay, there's an excellent post-spawn smallmouth bite happening. We're catching these fish in four to six feet of water using slow sinking plastics, suspending jerk baits, and even top waters. Water temperatures are in the mid 60s, and these fish are super aggressive, and we're getting a lot of big fish right now. Um, down in the Hayward Lakes area, water temperatures are also in the mid 60s. Walleyes are starting to transition to summertime patterns. You're going to find them along deep weed edges in 15 to 18 feet of water, or even main lake reefs and points, slip bobbers and leeches, jigs and leeches, uh, baits like uh, jig and wraps and herky jerkies are all good presentations. Crappies are starting to move out a little bit deeper. Uh, still, you're going to want to find some standing weeds. Uh, seven, eight feet of water uh, seems to be the best locations right now to find fish. Smallmouth bass on the inland lakes are also post spawn. You're going to be able to find those fish shallow in less than 10 feet of water along rocky shorelines or reefs. Um, still using the kind of the same presentations we're using on Shawamigan Bay. Uh, slow sinking plastics, suspending jerk baits, and top waters are all working great. In um, the St. Louis River and Superior Harbor, a lot of good walleye fishing happening right now as well. Uh, we're catching fish, uh, trolling stick baits behind planer boards um, in anywhere from 5 to 10 feet of water. Uh, fishing's really good right now. We've got a lot of good things happening in northern Wisconsin. Thanks, Jeff. Now let's head over to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. We're in our early summer patterns here on Vermilion now. As for the walleyes, Think your weed edges, you find that sand grass, you find those young of the year perch, you're gonna find some walleyes. Uh, transitions, you hear me talking about that a lot all the time, but it's, it's so important. Uh, your mud to rock, uh, uh, mud to sand stuff, that that's all has walleyes in there right now. And the depths, again, they can be all over the place from 10 to 20 some feet. Your transition off of your reefs also are holding fish. And then also the the muskies have pretty much moved out of those bays or hung up on points and saddles. You get out in those open water basins, you're going to see hooks on your rafts. There'll be whitefish or tulipies. The muskies and pike are in there feeding on those tulipies. You can open cast those areas. Uh, big crankbaits, uh, big plastics, all that stuff works. I like like the storm thunder sticks, your big grandma, that sort of stuff. And uh, you should get into some good muskie action on Vermillion. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head south to Leech Lake with the Leisure Outdoor Boys. 
Uh, it's that time of year. Uh, in the last week, I think I've put the fish in the boat three different ways. Uh, primarily, I've been sticking to live bait rigging with leeches out producing crawlers uh, for me, but that's not to say that, you know, anytime I start in an area, I see a pot of fish, I'm always going to have both leeches and crawlers down. Uh, but leeches definitely out produced this past week. Uh, then if I find that pod to be like a little negative, a little neutral, uh, before I leave them, I'm going to do one of two things, uh, especially this time of year. I'm either going to drop a slip bobber on them or I'm going to pull spinners through them if they're a little bit more spread out. I would say that, uh, you know, we're kind of on the cusp of the spinner bite getting really good. Uh, the mayflies haven't quite hatched. There could be parts of the lake where, you know, you're starting to see them kind of matriculate up through the water column, um, but it's about to start. Uh, so make sure you have your rigging rods ready, you got your spinner rods ready, and again, slip bobbers are always a go-to on Leech Lake. When I'm pulling spinners, I kind of like to use those uh, Max Smile blades and kind of that uh, orange or the uh, Northland uh, Butterfly blade. This one's got kind of that uh, little black fire tiger uh, type pattern. So get out there, have fun, and catch some fish. Jim Ernst here with this week's Angling Buzz Report on Leech Lake. Now let's head over to Fort Peck in Montana with Josh Johnson. When it comes to walleye, I'd say as a general rule, the Bone Trail area has had a lot of fish. Also the Northwest area of the lake has had a lot of fish as well. Um, when it comes to lake trout, I would recommend to going a little further from the dam than what you might say normally fish. You know, I'd probably start going a good six or eight miles from the dam to start your search. Uh, for lake trout, you know, I'd say kind of that 60 to 95 foot of water has been really productive. For walleye, you know, starting out in that kind of that 13 to 23 foot of water has been really productive and then actually looking shallower from there at times, especially on the warm days. Um, when it comes to walleye, uh, jigging has been very effective as well as windy rigging a minnow. Um, a couple jigs I like to use is a jig with an underspin with a three or four inch gulp minnow and a plain old ball head, lead head jig with a three or four inch gulp minnow. Uh, stay mobile, don't get stuck on one spot. If you're on fish and they're not biting, just keep moving. A lot of times when you're on fish, you're in a good area, just keep moving along, look for those fish, look for patterns, and then refine your technique from there. Have a good time out there. In 2021, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 95% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Developed from the latest technology, Blackfish Technical Apparel outperforms, so anglers have gear that they can trust in, no matter the conditions. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start out with Big Bite Baits, their Slim Minnow. 
This is a four inch narrow sided minnow that's great for snap jigging walleye. I mean, you could also drop shot this for bass. But I look at this and immediately think in the colors, the shape, the size of this, perfect. Put this on a jig head, quarter ounce jig head, three eighths ounce jig head, and snap jig this for walleye all day long. Big bite baits, the slim minnow. And from Suffolk, an excellent monofilament line series, the Pro Mix series. And this is a great value series from Suffolk. You have four pound clear right here. This would be great for panfish, crappie, bluegill, even trout fishing. Six pound monofilament, that'd be great. You know, also panfish, maybe finesse bass fishing. And then eight pound, you can also use that eight pound even for leaders. If you're fishing braided line and you need a leader, this is perfect from Suffix, the Pro Mix series. And from Rapala, some new colors in the Rip and Wrap series. This is a very popular bait, not only for bass, but especially for walleye. Snap jigging these for walleye, you can trigger some really big ones to bite, and they have some new, really, really cool colors. This one's called Voodoo Haze. I do like the bigger size, the size seven. For some of the bigger walleye, you snap jig this shallow, you snap jig this deep, and you'll trigger some pretty big ones to bite. The rip and wrap from Rapala. And also, hair jigs have become very popular in the walleye world for snap jigging. As the case here from Northland Tackle, the deep V jig. And you can see some great walleye colors here. You see the, the shape of the head here allows it to cut through the water. So when you're snap jigging it, it darts down into the side nice and fast, triggering walleye to bite some great colors and, and a lot of different size options available. The deep V jig from Northland Tackle. You know, color is confidence when it comes to fishing, and Berkeley has some exclusive colors only available at Fleet Farm in their Flicker Shad series. You can see a couple great options here, and if you go into the store, you go in online and you'll see even more options available. These are great for trolling, casting for smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and especially for walleye. And it can get warm out there and being protected from the sun is important from Blackfish Gear. This is their Sun Gator. This is a very comfortable face buff four-way stretch and it does protect you from the sun and I'm very used to wearing these I can wear these all day no problem you don't get uh, you don't get hot wearing these especially from, from blackfish this helps wick the warmth away from your face and keeps you cool and protected from the sun the angler sun gator and to my right the lakes and rivers Pro Series small tackle bag. This is perfect if you're a kayak angler, if you're a shore angler like myself. A lot of storage options, handle options. You got a little pocket in the back as well. Open it up and you can fit a few tackle boxes in here. This is a really great option from Lakes and Rivers, the Pro Series small tackle bag. And next from Hummingbird, the Lake Master Plus chips. Now in the North Country, the mapping in these chips and the detail is truly incredible. They have lakes mapped in the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. I mean, you zoom in, you can see just incredible contours in the Lake Master Plus. Just plug this in to your Hummingbird Marine Electronics and you're gonna be catching fish in no time. And Daiwa has a new series in their ballistic line. This is the Ballistic MQ2500XH. The MQ system doesn't require a body cover. It actually has an engine plate that screws directly onto the body, eliminates the need for screws, and it just improves the strength of the reel and improves the water resistance of the body and allows actually for a larger diameter drive gear to be installed. It has the air bale, air rotor, and of course, Daiwa Tough Ditchy Gear, just a fantastic reel. The Ballistic MQ2500XH. And lastly, from St. Croix, they redesigned their entire Icon series. And right here, this is the Bounce and Troll. These are more lightweight. These are really strong, very sensitive rods. A great reel butt here. And this one specifically, this is a seven foot medium heavy power. And as you can see, this is for bottom bouncing or trolling. And this is the Icon series made specifically for walleye anglers. Be sure to shop online at fleetfarm.com and also visit your local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. It is so exciting to be at the boat ramp, ready to head out on the water. And when you're excited, it can be a lot easier to make mistakes. So having a simple boating checklist prior to launching can make each experience on the water that much better. I'm gonna run through what I do each time I head out on the water for my checklist. Now, depending on where you live, safety equipment can vary, but one thing that you always have to have on board for everybody in the boat is a life jacket. So make sure you've got your life jackets on board 
as well as a throwable. If you've got a bunk trailer, you can unlatch it now. If you have a roller trailer, wait till the boat's in the water. What I've switched to on my trailer is an automatic launching and loading system you can get at boattotrailer.com. It's really easy to install, and once I'm backed into the water, I just pull the handle and it releases the boat from the trailer. Loading is just as easy. As you're pulling in, the bow eye is guided to the center of the latch and the jaws automatically lock the eye and your boat is secured on the trailer. Simply pull out, hook up your strap and chain, and you're ready for travel. It makes loading and unloading a dream, especially when you're by yourself. I'm good to go with this particular system so I can unhook the front strap. Now I'll move to the back and do that process. I'm gonna unhook both of the safety straps in the rear and there are a number of things to do back here. Safety straps, be sure the plug is in, be sure the plug is in, be sure the plug is in. I've forgotten that so many times, but make sure the plug is in. Remove the transom saver. And then on this boat, to prevent uh, the motor from swaying, I've got little stabilizer clips that I've got on the side of the boat. I'll be sure to pull both of those off. And then the last safety strap, and I like to make my way around the boat, make sure that I complete every step as I make my way around. Now I should have everything done with unhooking the boat with the plug-in, motor ready to go, but I've got a few other things I need to do prior to launching. Another very important step is be sure to inspect the boat and the trailer for any aquatic invasive species, and it looks like in this case we're clear. Now I'm gonna move inside the boat and go through the next steps. All right, my next step is I'm gonna make sure that I have power for everything that I need. So I'm gonna fire up the master power here, get my electronics ready, and another crucial element of power is being sure that the motor has enough juice to turn over. So what I like to do is just turn the key over, make sure I get that sound, that the motor has power to it, and from there I'll also check my fuel gauge to be sure that I have enough fuel for this boating outing. Next, I'm gonna just take care of some of my personal effects, make sure that everything is organized in the boat, and then get my rods out that I'll be using today for fishing and have those on the deck so when I pull into the first spot, I'm ready to catch. Now be sure to do all of these steps off to the side so the ramp is clear for other boaters while you're preparing your gear for the day. I hope this was helpful and we're going to head out and catch some fish. We hope you enjoyed today's show and as always here on Angling Buzz we want to help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water clean, drain, dry. And be sure to enter our sweepstakes online at fleetfarm.com. You can also enter your local Fleet Farm store for the chance to win an awesome weekend up on Lake Vermilion. You get a guided fishing trip as well as a stay at one of the fantastic resorts up there. And be sure to visit us online at anglingbuzz.com and also across our social medias, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. It's simply Angling Buzz. We go more in depth on our buzz bite reports. We got tips, tricks, videos to help you catch fish throughout the entire season. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time.